Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning from Churchtown, Pennsylvania. I'm sorry I'm late. But I had a few things to take care of this morning. Walking toward the door in this gorgeous, beautiful, amazing, wonderful, fantastic morning. I hope that you are feeling awesome, wonderful, amazing, and fantastic this morning. I know I am. Good morning, everybody. Woo! Look at this. I swear, I mean, I, I'm dressed in one of my Mr. Rogers sweaters here today. I mean, you can walk around, you feel like you could go jogging or something. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's, it's cool, but it's nice, and it's just fantastic stuff. And, oh, my goodness gracious, I hope that you are just living life. I hope that you are enjoying every second of your existence. That's the way it should be. When we are free in Christ, that's the way it is. We are not afraid. You're not afraid. Your joy, your happiness is not contingent upon your circumstances. Understand that. And we read that again in Hebrews 11. Come to church on Sunday. Oh, we got a lot to talk about on Sunday. It's going to be fantastic and wonderful. And uh, I hope that wherever you go, you're hearing the word of God and it is fantastic and wonderful. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning to all the traffic. I don't know what I'm doing out here. Oh. Don't forget, Dennis, I hope you're going to bring your family. Liz, it's going to be a fantastic time. Let, uh, Lee, it's going to be fantastic. Christmas hymn sing Sunday at 6.30. This Sunday at 6.30. There's my friend Molly. Say hi, Molly. Have a good day at school. <laughs> Just goofing around. She's our neighbor from across the alleyway. That is Miss Molly. Is fantastic and wonderful, like all of my good friends here at Church Town. Oh my, so yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do today. I'm well caught up with my business. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Mike. I'm well caught up with my business. I have a little bit more to prepare for the weekend. Uh, the word has been coming to me throughout the course of the week, and I feel very, very good about it. Um, Part of that process was sort of uh, being lost on Wednesday and Wednesday morning word. Part of that process was sort of being lost when I preached at Carlisle Christian Academy. There's been so much swirling around in my head regarding faith, uh, regarding church, regarding Christianity. When we talk about what is your faith, we're usually talking about what is your religion is faith religion? What does scripture have to say about it? You know me, that's all I'm concerned about. What does scripture have to say about it? Good morning to the poinsettia tree. Hey, the ice cubes are working, Kim. They're fantastic. I, today, I guess it'll be due today or tomorrow for another round of ice cubes. So we'll be taking care of that. Church is all ready to go. It is Christmas time. S fantastic, fantastic. Anyway. I can't stay too long today, but I wanted to say good morning to you. I wanted to encourage you to invest in your fellowship this weekend. We must submit ourselves to the Word of God, submit ourselves to Jesus Christ as our Savior and as our Lord, as our King. Submit yourself to him and make his church stronger on earth. You will make your world and this world a better place. Boom. Bottom line. You say, well, you know, all of this stuff is going on, blah, blah, blah. I know all of this stuff is going on. Read your Bible. This stuff is supposed to be going on. It's going to go on. Guess what? Humankind is corrupt. Woo! Shocker. But you can be redeemed and you can be different. And you can feel differently about that sin. You can view it differently. There's another way of being, and that is as an adopted child of God. It is different. It, and, and it is the way we are meant to be in relationship, in communion with him. Try it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. And you talk about liberating. Liberating liberating we're singing go tell it on the mountain on uh 
I'm just all my music over there. I need to practice because I'm playing that on the guitar to end the service on Sunday. And I love playing it. I love playing it. Um, there is such a, a, good, a good vibe in here uh, through a, the Advent season with the music and everybody that invests in music and singing and playing and all of those different things. It's so much fun. Wednesday night, we worked our tails off between the band and the choir and preparing for Sunday and all of those things. And uh, Josh, we'll see you Sunday night at 630. All my friends here from online, come and visit me. That's a Sunday hymn sing. You just have to sit. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. We do take a bit of an offering. We do take a bit of an offering. We take an offering to support our music program. Um, that's part of what we, you know, what we do here. But that's, that's no big deal. Right? It's come and visit me. You don't have to participate in the offering. <laughs> I'll put something in for you. <laughs> oh, I don't want that to be a discouragement. Anyway, it's a fantastic and wonderful evening. And I'm really, really, you can tell I'm really looking forward to Sunday, Sunday morning. You know what? Faith. Another one of those words that we throw around in the church like water. Too many words watered down. Does it, what does it mean? What does it mean? Faith, trust, hope. What's your favorite? Go tell it on the mountain. Well, then I'll see you Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. <clears throat> Invite my drama team to come some Sunday e eve oh, evening. We would love to come. Ooh, the drama team. Ooh, drama. All right, Greg, are you involved in all that drama? <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. That would be fantastic. Fantastic. So anyway, I'm full of energy today. I'm ready to go. I'm not sure exactly what all is going to happen today with me. Had a um, really busy but a really wonderful day yesterday. Great conversations with, with uh, wonderful people. Just fantastic things. Um, uh, went to the radio station, did some good work there. We're, we're having a wedding here at the church, New Year's Eve. And so I met with the couple last night. Okay. Uh, I met with the couple last night and uh, you know, we had a great hour and a half long conversation about the wedding ceremony. They're delightful and it's going to be so much fun because New Year's Eve as Christmas Eve is a Sunday, obviously, so we have the service, and they, the wedding's going to be around 3.30, so we're going to make this transition. It's all obviously going to be Christmas-themed and winter and Christmas and that. It's going to be so much fun, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. Um, a lot of two weddings in December that I'll be uh, blessed to um, officiate this, this December, so I'm really, it's going to be, ah, just wonderful. The guy in the cubicle is next to me is starting to stare as he hears the singing. Well, you know what? <clears throat> Why don't we just give him something to sing about? Everybody. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Everyone, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Hey, Bill, how are you doing? So, how about that, Dennis? That should get you fired. <laughs> I don't want that. Dennis, I don't want you to be fired. I don't want to see you and your family Sunday night. All right? I just love it. All right? Come. Give me hugs. Give me hugs. All right? That's it. Talking about faith. What kind of faith? What kind of faith? Woo! You got to be singing. I don't... You know what, folks? And you'll hear this every weekend at Churchtown. You will hear this every weekend. Your joy. Your joy. Your life being. Yourself. Who you are, your self-esteem is not contingent upon your circumstances or upon any other human being. All the way up to including your children and your wife or husband. Your joy 
is derived from your relationship, your salvation, your redemption. You are saved, you are sanctified, you are an adopted son or daughter of the Most High God. Sin and death conquered. No bearing in your life. Man, that's fantastic. That's freedom. That's power. That's a new way of looking. But, 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 no, but. No, but. You give yourself over to that reality the way that you are, are meant to be spiritually and physically. And you will begin to view all of those but, 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 but in a different way. Right? Let me rephrase that because I just said you'll begin to view all those buts in a different way. You know what I mean. Get real, people. Get real. Get real with Christ. Be that person. Be the person he sees. And you'll get real. So, yeah, faith. What does it mean? What does it mean? So, yeah, I know what it means to me. Here's one of the things... Here's one of the things about it. Let me just, the Hebrews 11, been stuck here. <clears throat> been stuck here. Been stuck in the promises of God, right? Promise, the, the theme, the Advent theme this week is hope here in Churchtown. Hope. We're going to talk about hope. Hope, trust, faith, believing. How are they all interrelated? What do they all mean in terms of our Christianity? In terms of what we call our faith, in terms of our submission, what does that mean in terms of our future? And what does it mean in terms of how we live now? I mean, it's hard. I, I, you know, I shared this. I keep, I keep, I keep coming back <clears throat> in Hebrews 11. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and floggings. Others were chained and put in prison. You understand that our faith, obviously scripture teaches us if, if our faith is designed to, to make us happy according to all of the earthly definitions of happiness. More stuff, more things, more whatever, more comedy series on TV or whatever the case may be. It's not happiness. You've got to be pretty solid in your faith to understand that no matter what happens around you, the good, the bad, the ugly, the glorious, and the horrible of life here on earth, you're solid, man. You're solid. Because you un you've got to, I don't know how, oh, I want you on the other side. There's a different way of being. There's a better understanding. There's a, a fulfillment. There's a conquering of fear that is yours when you give yourself over. I want that for every person. That's, my, that's all I preach. That's all I talk about. It's all I do. I want that joy for you. Anyway, Anywho, there we are, right? All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. I have faith that the promises of God will be fulfilled. I have faith. And there is nothing on earth no circumstance, no pain, no great joy and great wealth and no great betrayal that can shake that faith. Hi, Sherry. Long time no see. You guys need to take a break and get in here. Stop working so hard. Get in here and get some hugs. You see, we're all about hugging at church time. We're huggers. We're huggers here, so anyway.
That's what I've got to say. I don't know what kind of other trouble I'm going to get into today. How about you? Um, but I'm getting excited. I'm going to finish the, put the finishing touches on the weekend. <clears throat> Warm up the pipes. Oh, for Sunday. It's going to be fantastic. So just excited about everything. Hi, good morning to you, Sherry Luther Toland. She's a fave. She's a sister here at Churchtown. Anyway, anywho, tell me something. Tell me something about you. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, here we go. Here, I'm curious about church membership. For what reasons is it acceptable to leave a church? Seems like there's a lot of church hopping and many don't want to be committed to a congregation. Boom, boom, boom. Yo, yo, yo. For what reasons it is, is it acceptable to leave a church if they're not preaching the word of God, if they're preaching the word of man, if they're not preaching the ways of, yeah, doctrinal purposes. You said it very, in a very fancy theological way. You know, Dennis, that is always, you're, you know, I'm in a situation right now in one of the organizations in which I'm invested. And it's not, it's not healthy. And I'm called into it and I'm, 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 I'm hovering around it. I'm asked to be in a, some sort of a leadership role here. And, and I'm constantly trying to discern, am I called to be there in order to change from within, for lack of a better term? You know what I mean? To, in order to help the organization change from within, to bring the word of God. Is that presumptuous to me, of me to even think that, that I can do that? Or is it unhealthy? Should I draw a boundary and should I walk away? Dennis, I don't know if there's an answer or a pat answer or an easy answer to your question, especially when it concerns a fellowship, especially when that fellowship is claiming to be a, a church, especially when that church is claiming we preach the word of God but on the, from the inside, you're like, no, this is human-led, human-run, human doctrine. They're trying, like I said yesterday, a, a lot of churches have cultish behavior because it becomes a closed circuit, if you will, a closed circuit within those walls. And although they're saying, yes, Jesus Christ is the way to heaven, right? the way to salvation, Jesus Christ is the no one comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. This is what I said yesterday. But no one comes to Jesus Christ but through me. And whether that is explicitly stated or implicitly created in the church, that happens. And you, you as, a, as a pew member, as a congregational member, right? As a parishioner, you're like, okay, I've got to do what this church says in order to get connected with Jesus Christ. And sometimes it's very subtle and sometimes it's very overt. The discerning individual has to just do just that. If it is evil, I think you need to draw a boundary and leave. If, it is, if the Lord is saying, no, it is my church, it can be redeemed. Be there until I tell you to leave. Then stay there until he tells you to leave. No easy answer. No easy answer. Unless it's straight cult. Like the doctrine is, yes, you know, and, and you've got some pastor standing up there going, yes, I spoke to Jesus last evening and he told me this to tell you. You need to give me one third of all of your income and you need to do, you know, uh, pew, pew, gone. Right? But if it's more subtle than that, if it's a church like one of the churches of Revelation that is... It's steering off the center line, right? It's going into the ditch, but it hasn't taken the off ramp. And perhaps you're being called to stay, to serve, to bring the word of God, even if it's difficult to speak truth into the power of that church and have those conversations that we don't like to have. That's not in the Bible, brother. That sort of thing. Okay. I'm getting ready to take... Over the kids' art ministry this Sunday. Woo, the art ministry. That sounds messy. <laughs> Anytime you have kids' art ministry together, that sounds messy. I'd leave for dog or anything else. It's right to someone to leave a congregation just because someone's... 
That's a human thing. I, I think any healthy congregation has to understand, one, we will hurt each other. We're very close. And this is what we talk about at Churchtown. Openly, we're very close. And it's going to happen. Even if Pastor Brian, you know, there is, forgets a prayer request, that can be very hurtful. It's one of many prayer requests and you're very busy, Pastor. I know all of those excuses, but it was that individual's prayer request. It was that individual's episode thing happening that week. And it is important. And it's hurtful. And it appears as though I've ignored them. It can be very hurt. We have to understand that that's going to happen. Our, our conversation, our thinking has to be on what, how we respond to that. We are people. And we're going to say things and do things. We're going to say things sometimes in humor or sarcastically. They're going to be taken the wrong way. We're going to sometimes get angry and intentionally do things. It's going to happen. A church can't operate on the premise that what happens if we hurt one another? We're going to. We must operate on that premise and discuss how we react to it. Are we going to live biblical? Biblically, in a state of love and in a state of forgiveness because Jesus Christ forgave. Are we going to follow biblical doctrine and address one another in love and say, brother, sister, here is what I heard or this is what I felt when you said that. Can you have those conversations? It's important. So, did I answer your question? Probably not. People are still going to get pissy and leave. Pardon my French. It's going to happen. But chances are, if something happens like that and they get pissy and leave, there is already something going on. And what happened was a trigger, not a cause. If that makes any sense. Especially, again, in smaller congregations. There's like, oh, I'm, uh, eh, eh, I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. Or maybe the Holy Spirit is convicting Right, that person they're seeking repentance and they're very uncomfortable because in that church the Bible is being preached and the Holy Spirit is convicting and they're like mm, 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 mm. oh look Johnny looked at me sideways people church people I'm telling you church people I'm out of here I'm going to go find me a church where I'm not convicted of my sin ouch there are plenty of them out there go hide sing songs you won't never be, ever be convicted of your sin. You won't ever come face to face with Jesus Christ. You won't ever be asked to. Lots of them out there. Go find one. Tough, but true. Tough, but true. Good question again and again. I would say in terms of worship style and what's being preached, if you're making a lateral movement between a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching repent and believe church that worships with the old hymns and a Bible believing Bible preaching repent uh, and believe church that worships with a mixed worship or more modern hymns a lateral movement yeah you can change because you enjoy the style differently I don't recommend it I, I feel again how are you making your decision based on the superficialities of the church or based on the conviction of Holy Spirit I mean, there, it's not an easy decision. You know, why were you there at this church where you feel uncomfortable in the first place? Have you asked God that question? Why am I here in this church where I don't feel entirely comfortable? I'm, I'm yours, Lord. Like, what, what, what would you have me? And if he's saying, it's, it's okay. You don't need to be at this. Look over here. Then so be it. But... Again, easy, easy answer. I'm all, you know me, invest in the fellowship. Invest in your fellowship. The church needs you, needs your submission to the king. Yeah. Boom, right? Now that's overt cult and other bunch of other weird stuff. Uh, I think that it's okay to wonder, Deb. I wonder. I, 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 I am in a, this constant state of prayer and discernment about 
where, how I am walking and how I am leading and how I am preaching and how I am teaching. It's okay to be in, there's a good tension. You don't have to view tension as a negative thing all of the time. You know, there's a good tension. I want to stay in that good stretching zone where I'm being stretched, where there is healthy tension, understanding causes for me to stay in prayer. Have I taught that correctly? Let's look again. Have I, have I, have I taught that correctly? Are we doing that correctly? Is this what God's will for us is? How can I tell? Is that in here? Even issues of denomination and conference, what, what is happening here? What is coming down from the top? Is that from Scripture? Is that scriptural? I need to know. Because if it's in here, I want it. And if it isn't, I don't. And we are a denomination that claims that this is our only rule of faith and practice. If it's in here, we want it. And if it isn't, we must question it. So questioning and living that questioning life, I mean, you know in your quiet moments, Deb, don't you? If that's a healthy thing that you're questioning and that sort of thing. Or if the Lord is convicting you. You were the one that I was really hoping would stand up for me, Deb. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but you know. But you know. And chances are, if you've moved away from it for those reasons, you're still thinking about it, you're working through the doctrinal issues, you're understanding them, and you're comfortable where you are now, chances are you're where you should be right now. Not to say that maybe you're not being prepared to speak into the life of that other church some other time. It's a great journey. I've done things and, and talked to people. And, and it's incredible. When, when Jesus Christ is your king, when you serve him, you're not just like, oh, I want to go to heaven. Thank you. You're like, no, you are my Lord and Savior. I serve you. Oh, what a fantastic journey that is. Woo! Hi, Jory. Hi, Con oh, Connie. Hi. <clears throat> hmm? I, maybe not much can define what we all know, Connie, right? That's, you know, what, the thing that we're doing here online, the thing that we do on Sundays, the thing that the church does every Sunday worldwide, globally, is we try to get together and continue to figure this out, to, to work with one another, to be with one another, to commune with one another, and to commune with him. Lord, what would you have of us? Help us figure this out. Yeah, so now, you know, and I agree with everything that you said there. Comfortable is, it's kind of a relative term. And I think you do need to be careful. Because, you know, Satan makes you very comfortable in your wealth and in your opulence and everything that you have to the degree that you don't need Jesus. And churches can do that very well, too. Like I said, when you employ the Disneyland theory of churchianity, bring people in, make them incredibly comfortable Holy Spirit doesn't always make us comfortable. There's you know, unrepentant sin in our life when we're not a repentant individual at all. Those sorts of the Holy Spirit, that's what I mean about someone can be sitting in here and feel very uncomfortable and be looking for an excuse to get out. So that's when little Johnny or whatever, you know, looks at them sideways and they're like, people suck, I'm out of here, church people. Whoa. But in reality... Holy Spirit is saying, come to me, come to me, come to me. Face your unrepentant sin. Come to me, come to me, come to me. And yourself is saying, no, no, no. I love my sin. I'm staying where I am. Now leave me alone in church. There are lots of churches that are very happy to oblige that sentiment. And so, yeah. So yes and no on that comment, I think. And I hope I've given you some things to think about in terms of that. It's okay to be uncomfortable. If you want to give yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be uncomfortable. It doesn't happen any other way. And you can read through all of the examples in the New Testament of people that have given themselves over to Jesus Christ, to Jesus or through the apostles. You know, they were doing some pretty horrible things. And they had to face themselves and their sin 
and give it over and understand that Jesus had cleansed us. So, yeah. But again, on the other side of that equation, if, you, if, you, if you're there, but you're not a match for that church, you are to be somewhere else. Excuse me, I think Holy Spirit tells you that as well. And you're like, and it's okay to make that lateral movement. Yeah, so again, easy answer, right? Nope, sorry. Hi, Bill, good morning, Bill. I've always thought you should change churches as the last, uh, always. There should be a compelling reason, yes. No, you are old school and you should be old school. There should be a compelling reason, right? You shouldn't shop for churches like you shop for all-inclusive resorts. And excuse me, Connie, but the one that makes you most comfortable. Because the one that makes you most comfortable may be the one where you can be hidden to the greatest degree from Jesus Christ. And so, yes, it is a last resort uh, of, to use that term. You know, it should not be something that is undertaken superficially or easily or glibly or however you want to phrase it. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Jennifer. Or jo <laughs> There's Bill. Dennis, I'm sorry. That's Bill right there. Old school or just old? That's, I, you know, that's my brother, Bill. So anyway, I love him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know I was feeling it. I'm telling you, kids, at 52, like I can get up and I can get going during the day and I can get a lot of things done and I can have a lot of energy and I can do all of those things. But it takes a little while these days. Like I roll out of bed, you hear, literally hear joints popping. Um, sometimes my right leg, because my knee and now my knee replacement isn't correct, my right leg is like, here's the lower part of it and here's the upper part of it. And I'm like, I snap my leg and he comes back in. And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like a 80 ton boulder beginning to roll down a slope. And I'm just like, oh, oh, and then I get going. Um, but it's crazy these days, man. Whoa, Dennis, I stuck up for you. Whoa, Dennis, you know, you come Sunday night, you're not getting a hug. No, you're, I'll give you a hug. Are you kidding me? That could be direct. Oh, man, Dennis, I, I stuck up for you. That's cold, brother. I do believe the church should be truly local. I believe in the local church as well. Of course, that is the context into which God has called me. And that is the embedded. I am, you know, I'm, we are a very old school model here at Churchtown. You don't even see that much in the small uh, local churches of God. And that was the model. And that is the church that is embedded in the town and the pastor that is embedded in the church. I mean, we have the, the setup here with the church and the parsonage and the pastor lives there and he's there and, and ingrained into the church and ingrained into the community and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, and that I'm all about that. You know, um, I'm all about that. And when you hear my preaching, I will always say, your relationship with Jesus Christ comes first your relationship with your family and, and how that is portrayed as you lead your family, um, spouse and family, comes second. Your fellowship comes third. And then we move out into the world. But I do believe the local church is here because we must be healthy and whole and confident Followers of Jesus Christ before we can get out into the world. You've heard me say it a thousand times. I know people go out and they say, we're, we're telling people about Jesus. We're telling people about Jesus. And I always say, what are you telling them? What are you telling them? <laughs> you know, and so what we tell them about Jesus, we can hone here in the local congregation. Iron sharpening iron, supporting, loving, Submitting, understanding Jesus's call upon our life and moving out as healthy 
submissive followers of the Most High God. So that's the local part of the local church. And, and like I said, so. I call it as I see it. Wow. Old soul, old body, I'm not so happy about. I'm with you 150%. My knee is just jamming right now. It is absolutely crushing me right now. And I'm just, I, I get so very frustrated with it. Um, the replacement has failed. There's a poly disc in between the femur and the tibia. Um, and it has come out. And so it's going to need to be surgically repaired. Um, and I'm very angry. It's very, very, very painful. But uh, it is what it is. This knee and I, I'm going to uh, see if I can't get the leg amputated from the knee down and get a blade. I think that would be so cool. Uh, and then just be done with it. So I don't, I don't think he'll do that, but. Mm -hmm. It does, if, yeah, sometimes the church changes. There's another factor, boom. But, and I like the way you put that, Bill. And you are no longer needed for the new pastoral vision. But that indicates that you are submitted to the Holy Spirit and he is leading. And that is key, 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 key. Okay? So that, 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 that piece that you indicated there is absolutely true. And you're going where you are serving and, and your gifts are being manifest and you are serving and if the Lord sees fit and he alters and changes and that, but it's all of his work. And now he's saying to you, hey, come over here once where you're needed over here. Absolutely. Comfortable in being welcomed and a family feeling. Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Bingo. Bam. You said it better than I could, Connie. Fantastic. That's exactly what I was trying to indicate. And that's what I was exactly what I was trying to indicate. And we find that here in a smaller congregation a lot. People come and it is either it, there seems to be like this is either what they have been searching for. There is a connection because there is an intimacy in a smaller congregation. There is this idea of chamley. There is a, this idea of. Uh, well, intimacy is what I said. Right, as we submit ourselves as a congregation to the Lord's vision. Sometimes that is like, whoa, no, I, I, I don't want that. And maybe it's because an individual isn't ready or maybe it's because an individual is comfortable in their sin and all of those different things, I don't know. But there doesn't seem to be much of a, hey, I'm going to come and uh, you know, come to church town every once in a while, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so we see that quite a bit. Um, and we enjoy, well, we, I don't know, you just have to try. But yeah, I hope that people feel super welcomed. Hey, Andrew, I'm doing well. I'm doing fantastic. I just said I, my knee hurts, but I'm otherwise doing well. Checking out the time here. I, I got to get going. My beloved is getting ready to go to work. And you know, what do I always say? I love you guys. But I love her more. And I want to say goodbye to her. We need to, uh, we're going to be leaving. When, right from work tonight, we, she and I have an errand that we need to run. So I'm going to say goodbye to you all. Can I pray for you? Father, what an incredible conversation this morning. Thank you so much for drawing us together. I pray that Holy Spirit has given each and every individual who sees this, who experiences, who watches, speak to them, Lord. Give them the glimpse, the power of redemption. Empower your church, Father God, as we change our world and we change this world into your vision. Lord, bless us as we move into this weekend. I pray every individual finds and invests into, in their fellowship a fellowship that is inspired by you, led by you, a fellowship that is submitted to your vision for them as individuals and as a group, as a community, as a fellowship. You is, is, your vision is what we need, not ours. 
too much of us. Not enough of you. So folks, let's bring him out. Let's bring him out. Live with Jesus Christ as your king. In Jesus' name, amen.